Welcome to the Battleship Podcast. I'm Christy Cree, and with me today is someone who does something, Rob Milks. Stokes. Whatever. And sat with him like an upside down smile that's angry at something, Mike Cook. Comedian. Kinda. How are you both today? Uh, I'm doing alright. Yeah, I'm doing cool. Excellent. So what I've been thinking about then, talking about for games... Whoa, whoa, Gears... slow. You're taking speed. What's happening? Whoa, whoa. Gears... Oh, In the last episode you had acid. What have you had now? Gears Gaming Gulag. Jingle, please. So we have to come that back is, to that now. That is not our replacement jingle. <laughs> right. Gaze Gaming Gulag. I've been thinking about uh, games, what we all like in games, what we desire in games, what we want more out of in those video games. Um, it comes down to gameplay, story, graphics. What are your opinions on those things? Where do you rank them in the things that you need most in a video game? See, I was going to say, I don't even rank those in the top three things I need in a video game. Being awkward, hit me. Hit me with your things. I need a... Thesaurus Rob. Yeah, no. I I need a suit of armour, a blonde woman, and a big planet full of aliens to kill people with. Oh. Seamus Orion. Metroid Prime. Yeah. Yeah. Seamus Orion. Whatever I need. The only rich Metroid Prime. (laughs) Seamus Orion. um, It's Samus Aran. No, in the mm. Irish remake, it isn't that me and Cree got commissioned last week by the Sony film executives that appear in our creative corner. Shamash. I am not going to be listening to this episode because, as a Metroid fan, that instantly insults me. So we're talking about games and then Rob interjected with some bullshit about a blonde woman. I thought the piece was, when you buy a game, or when a game's coming out, what do you want from it? Yes. That's Gameplay, right. graphics, story. Because graphics aren't even a big All of the above. Anymore. Yeah. Is there, any, is there anything off that three we've missed? Um, they're the three core ones. Like especially for me, because I'm always for I'm a big story driven guy. Like I was originally, as we know, here I, at the Potemkin. I was oh shit. I was originally supposed to be getting an Xbox One last week, but as I was walking, fucking this, he's been playing this tune for the last three months. <laughs> yeah. But as I was walking, February, I'm gonna get an Xbox. March, I'm gonna get an Xbox. Well. Yeah, 2000, by September, you're gonna have a 2017, PS4. I'm yeah. gonna get an Xbox. But games are so good. So I was what, but I was walking to games, I literally buy an Xbox on Saturday, and I was just walking past the used games, like little aisle, I saw Mafia 2, and I've heard Mafia 2, some good story times. Oh! No. So I picked it up, I, t- I took it to your friend, Robber, he was there. He got me- Ah, uh, my local game, game trader. trader. Bless him, he got me the fucking special edition one. He gave me that one. So I was like, Of course he did. So I so got all the DLC. Robo helps anyone out who's a friend of the Bate- it's, Battleship Potemkin. It's so nice, it's so nice. So I got that. Literally, the graphics, mediocre. The gameplay, eh. But the story and the voice acting, literally on point. I was so pleased I postponed getting an Xbox One to get this game. It's a really good game. <laughs> I, I, I proper enjoy that game. And that's You're like, blaming this game for your procrastination. Literally, well, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was so broke from Mafia 2 that I can't even buy one anymore. Looks like, but with me, what I do, if I enjoy a game, I go through and get all the achievements. I just, I, I like that part of it. So that's what I've been doing this past week on my come down, just going through it, getting, collecting everything. It's a ball it. You achievement hard. Oh, it's so annoying having to collect wanted posters. That's you what say, I do. Yeah, you say you like, told you your achievements yeah. are bullshit, but yeah, it's, you're, it's an, it's an, it's, it is annoying, but, See, I find it interesting that you say, oh wow, the sto- story is so good, I have to get every achievement. Yeah, including we... all the collectibles. No, that's, but that's like my own, like, little OCD thing where I like to fill it up and just look at it. I love that. <laughs> what, do you ever just look at your 100% wall of achievements? Oh, like, uh, li- literally, I go through finally. it. Finally. I love it, because I've put all my games in order as well, so it goes Kane and Lynch 1 and 2, Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, Dead Space 1, 2, 3, and I just love looking at the achievements that I've got for those games. And, and I'll, I'll click on it and I'll go through them. It's so sad. That is a terrible but, order. You went from K to M to D. I know, but I, I put them in, I t- tend to put them in order of the ones that like my favourite. So my least favourite will be my the order. So, yeah, so it's like Condemned is at the bottom. Um, oh, boo! <laughs> Condemned King Kong. Yeah. Excuse me, sir, but K- did you say Condemned is your least favourite yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's aged really badly, Rob. That's a oh, boo boo. It's aged really badly. No, oh, I love that game, man. Uh, Take that back. No, ju- like Just Cause as well. Just Cause is like somewhere at the bottom. But that's a game that I got in late. I got in late to that. I saw the trailer to Just Cause 3. I was like, thought, I want to buy the first one. Well, yeah, I yeah. thought, that looks that looks really fun. Gays, saving money for partying. <laughs> but I can't just dive in to Just Cause 3. I have to play the story, get to know the character. So I bought the first Just Cause. Un- literally unplayable. It's awful. Unplayable. It's, it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. Just Cause 2 such a jump. 
Such yeah. a jump in quality. Loved then, it. Then just play two. Then play one. No, because I need to. I, I, no. I can't. I can't do that. I need to play Minora. It's like I wouldn't jump into season two of The Wire. I'd, I'd have to watch season one of The Wire, season two, season three, season four. What if season one of The Wire was awful and had nothing to do with season two? Then it would literally. Have you ever played a Final Fantasy game? Yes. How does that go then? Oh, <laughs> yeah, but do you, I also do you, do you, no, do you, you start right at the beginning? It's just like right, I need but to buy them. They're not connected. Mm. They're ruined little stories. Potentially, but maybe the creators of those games have a grand narrative. Maybe they do, yeah. but I've... they're slipping did it you, through the background. Did you go and buy an NES to um, play the first one? You and Nez like, Robo, you fucking child <laughs> of the future. <laughs> no. no, but like, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't touch Final Fantasy anymore because they're just too large, too overwhelming. Like, I'd love to get into the new Final Fantasy remake that we're going to be doing, Final Fantasy VII, but it's going to be too, too much. And I've to do again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just did you do I number seven? Well done. Anyway. Enjoyed it. Um, so, story's a big deal for you then. Well, if you buy a game, you're like, you would, so Titanfall, or Star Wars Battlefront. Nah. You'd be no, no, no interest, interest at all. Well, um, I'm trying to think of a... But they look lovely and play well. I'm sure they do, but just, I like, I like to be involved. I like to, like, feel something. I don't want to just like <laughs> just dive in. Well, you like, feel like, nothing for, in regular life, so I don't blame you. <laughs> Literally, well, video games emotionally numb. Vi- video games do make me feel things that I've never felt before, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> just other other feelings that don't exist in your dick area. Yeah, yeah. but I uh, I enjoy it. But like, a bad story can can ruin it for me. Like really ruin it. So really? most games, even if you're having fun, most games have good stories, Rob. No, well, no, they don't. They Mass don't. Effect, uh, big things from space that are giant hands. Oh. Come to destroy giant the world. hands. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> the big hands are just going to kill the world. Where it just says giant hands come yeah. from space. They, they just come well, from Rob space. Rob didn't write it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just come from space and they're going to kill everyone. Why? Because they're machines and they don't like people. To be fair, the, the reasoning to those reapers was so fucking bullshit, and there I hate how they explained it. But I mean, the idea, the, the general theme of, of something unknown out there is coming to fuck us up. That's quite good. And the, and the how we react. I like that. Rounding <laughs> people up for a suicide mission. That's exciting. <sighs> oh my god. Subject zero! Oh. Yeah, it's all nonsense and shite. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So what do you like? You like, you like what? Graphics? Gameplay. Number one. What, what's, what's like, what's, what's a good gameplay? Like, what is a good gameplay? What is a good like, for worms, right? No story whatsoever. Mm. Great gameplay. Yeah. Great game. Strategy. Elements. Competition. I like things like that. Like skill. I like all games, really, but I very rarely pay attention because, like, recently, thanks to uh, backwards compatibility on the Xbox One, uh, they re released Dead Space. Yes. So I've been playing that again, and I played the shit out of that game. Didn't you? Uh, when it first came out, and uh, me and my mate have been replaying it. And as it's going on, he's like, So what's the story? I'm like, I have no idea. Can't believe it. But I've completed it several times. Just because it doesn't matter. What I'm bothered about is... Because the story, at best, is is usually cutscenes and stuff. So, let's say if you're playing for an hour, story-related cutscene narrative shit in that hour should be, at best, 15 minutes of that time. You've got 45 minutes of playing a game. So, the story isn't helping you out for the next 45 minutes. If you're playing a game that's shit... To play yeah. and like it, the cover system and shooting, and you don't care, or you know, just the whole it's just not fun to play. Yeah, then I couldn't give a toss if it was there will be blood. Mm. I don't, not gonna play it. I wonder how many gamers are actually like you though, because I, I think a lot of gamers do buy into the more. I mean, we've said it before about how games are trying to be Hollywood, and people, guys like love a good, love a good story, but I wonder yeah, but, how many yeah, but Hollywood has there. terrible stories. Like, I don't know, do I'm, people play, like, the Call of Duty campaigns? It's like, because yeah, Call of no, Duty is a big... Call, yeah. Call of Duty is a multiplayer game. Yeah, but best. it's a massive seller. It, but it's a huge yeah. game, but... Yeah, no, exactly. Your standard Call of Duty player, does he get it and then play the campaign, or does he just play multiplayer? I can imagine they just go straight to multiplayer, because I don't yeah. think there's much of a story in the campaign mode at all. It's basically mm. just running around shooting shit. See... Yeah, yeah, but to, with like, now we've got to go to Poland, and now we've got yeah. to... Now we're going to shoot Tunisia. Polish people! Yeah. Now we're going to yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. Africans! Yeah. No, I want With some more. like grand narrative, like yeah. it's a terrorist organization here, here is like another, we've never seen before. Yeah. Here is another justification to shoot Russians. Um, well, in fairness, Call of Duty do the thing that Commander Conquer used to do of like, hey, token celebrity. Yeah. Hey, look. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Yeah. Kevin uh, Spacey, yeah. he's not going to play the bad guy. Honest, honest, of course he's And in bad fairness, guy. before him, uh, I remember for the zombie DLC or something, they had George Romero. Yeah. Um, for like the zombie game mode. 
was like George Romero. Yeah, just... Which is you know, pretty cool. Shout out to George Romero. Yeah. Zombie guy. Yeah. See, I, I fucking love George Romero. Did he wait? Hold on. Did he come up with a first ever zombie film? Like the first ever zombie not, shit. No, no. First ever. That but... was the people who wrote the Bible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three days later, that's a zombie, bro. Yeah. But what? But did he kickstart the zombie movement? Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. In like the modern, in yeah, modern like cinema. Was, you could yeah. say Lovecraft, probably. I was it even. Oh right. That? So, okay, uh, I'd yeah. say like it started really with stories of voodoo and Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. People. Uh, yeah. Jesus. I don't think people are like, well, Jesus is a zombie. Well, he fucking is. Yeah. Um, technically, he Dead is, but... man comes back to life, eats brains. That's all in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send more paramedics. We urge you, Jesus. Hold yeah. on. We're working on it, mate. Yeah. Um, see, I... Because he obviously wanted to help the other people down from the crosses. Yeah. See, I'm kind of interested in the fact that you will take a bad gameplay yeah. over, um, you know, if the story is good enough. Because I think that in an ideal world, I think that gameplay is more important with stories a very close second. And in graphics, most of the time, I don't give oh, a shit Oh, story about. can give, get fucked. No. <laughs> see, I, I, I feel that way about graphics. Cause... Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I, see, I'm tempted to, but then I think of games like o- Okami or yeah. Zelda The Wind Waker. And those graphics almost define those games. Oh, yeah, I'm not there saying were... like there's no place for it, but there is... Yeah, there are films that are defined no, by the No, but I wonder if those games had been different, if they would have been as revered. Yeah. Yeah, but there's, yeah, but you've got, you've got films which are revered by the soundtrack. You've got, um, books which... Like what? Fucking Grease. <laughs> most, well, most musicals, honestly, could, yeah, plot yeah, shit. Yeah, you traditional shit. stage shows. Yeah. But there you go. It's, um, that sort of situation where for those games, yeah, the graphics are really important. Especially with Zelda, which doesn't have a plot. Than... Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, oh now you, you want to defend story? Where's your, <laughs> where's, your, where's your big epic story of man in skirt fights pig man? No, it's usually like I want to. I need to help my sister. I need to help my, my grandma. I need to help the queen. But no. or a tree told me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I cannot get past um, Ocarina of Time's game story because it interrupts the gameplay because it is constantly just. The perfect Are you daring is... to shit on one of the greatest games of all time? Huh? Yes, I am very prepared to do this. Um, this Death is because Ma- you get to look at it with your fucking new age eyes. You don't know anything about it. I was there at the time, man. With what? The... Where the fuck were you in 1996? I was free. Yeah, exactly. Shut I am your the... fucking I am mouth. The perfect... You've got no idea. I am the... This is problem I am with the... these people. I am the perfect age for a game that simplistic. No, it's 2016 now, and you, that's what you do. You look at it and go, Oh, look, I'm flipping crap There's never been anything like it before. Death Mountain. That's my idea. Oh, yeah, I love it. You my just ar- cite some no, unknown, no, no, non-selling there's... game and go, Well, no, that seals the no. argument. Death Mountain in Ocarina of Time. Like, that's my argument. You go to the guard, he goes, Oh, no, I won't let you go by. So you have to go speak to Imper. Get a note. Come back and give the guy the note. Well, you're like... standard fetch quests that have no doubt populated every RPG throughout time. But yes, the... Rob. But... You have to go and fetch things to progress. Yes, but no, Rob. Here's... Just like Metro here's... Prime. Yeah, but... You can't get through this door. You need to get a pulse rifle charger. But no, here's my st- thing. is that That is a case where the story of Ocarina of Time gets in the way of the gameplay. Well, because other Zelda games... But that's RPGs. Yeah, but... You can't go in yet because this hasn't happened yet. Yeah, but you don't are, have a boat. Yeah, but other Zelda games work the gameplay into the story. There were no other Zelda games before that. There was only the SNES ones. Yeah, and the SNES one worked better as a story. Yeah, but it's completely different when it's a top-down 16-bit fucking RPG. Yeah, I'm talking bit, about... I'm, t- when I'm specifically talking... Yeah, but here I'm specifically talking about gameplay relationship to story. Like, the in that game, you get... St- yeah, you have to play the, the story in a Zelda game, yes. Yeah, in the SNES game, yeah, in the SNES game, there is story, but it's all story that makes sense for the player. Yeah, the Master Sword, they don't give you this massive backstory of, oh, this came from the god demise and you had to stab a thing and pull this out the ground. And it's just like, no, it's just a sword that is evil's bane because the player is like, I want to go around kill monsters in this game. Oh, you love stories. This, I've never played the Zelda game, so I've never, had that experience. You seem really passionate about Zelda games. I've heard that they're good, but I've never really been interested. No, not particularly. By I just, I just hate the fucking looking at it from now going, mm-hmm, and then picking out. Well, I don't even in, know. I, I don't get how this was good at the time. The what fact does that inconsistency? Because you weren't there. Well, no, because how is it? Fun? How the fuck was Pong ever any good? Have you played Pac-Man? 
It's shite. It's but at the time, Pac-Man was the balls, dude. Yeah, Pac-Man's okay. alright. I don't. No, it's not. It's pretty shit. <laughs> you wouldn't play it for an hour. I have. That's more of a sign of what you and the ambiguous community do with your spare time. <laughs> ambiguous. Sort your life out. Ambiguous is the name of the game. Everyone Nobody knows Miss Pac-Man's far superior. <laughs> <laughs> Misses, I think you'll find. No, no it Miz. is Miss. Yeah, yeah. Miz. No, Miz. Miz. Yeah. So there was a marital dispute. But no, but like, like I, I'm the, just like kind of the shut fa- the fuck up for a second, right? The, what you explain about the story for me, I, I, I don't even know how you can get into these details of it because the st- the story part of it, yeah, there's fetch quests that have story related to it, but it's effectively the same fucking medieval fairy tale we've always had. Yeah, but it's the one my, true my hero prob- and saving a princess problem, and the big baddie. My problem with that story is that that's a case where the story has gotten rid of the gate, gotten. In, a in one way instance, the... on some quest on a mountain, and then you string the whole game up by its balls. The game it is... made me fetch something. The game is <laughs> full of this shit, where you have to like go around and piss about, not killing monsters, not exploring, just pissing about, going, "Oh, I've got to find this thing." Gorons need to eat. Gorons are starving. Gorons need to eat. They live in a mountain. Why the fuck are they starving? And it's so it's, it's that's what I mean. That. So pedantic. I wish you'd played the game, but no, because it's, it's, it's the like, Goron it's, part of it is just so no. tiny. But it's what these people do. No, there'll it's, be YouTube videos going. Win, a kind of times crap, and then Rob watches them and parrots these ideas out. You, you're no, a symptom this of is, the, what's wrong no, with the times. No, fuck this. I'm bringing this ship to a halt. No, I, d- I don't get how this is good at the time. Like, why would you read a book and then somebody just grabs the book, throws it across the room, and you're like. Go get the book. You're, pre- okay. you're basing the whole game on a fucking mountain. I mean, I- I'd love to know what the average... Is. Let's say the average completion time of Zelda is 40 hours. The Gorgon Mountain, at best, would be four or five. And that's the thing you point to. Yeah, but that's four or, hour- four or five of my hours gone. Just- well, you can have them back. You can use that time later to play fucking Pac-Man. <laughs> like, anyway... But yeah, like... Anyway, back to my original point. Which nobody cares about anymore. Well, that... Well, well we got... No, we did graphics, we did story, we did gameplay. Anything else for gaming go like... I didn't even say my fucking shit. Go on. Wait, go on then. Because All I, ears. Because I was going to say, I prefer gameplay that serves story and vice versa. So like, I think they should be intertwined. Which is why I think Ocarina of Time is a bad example. What's and you got A good example would be um, Undertale. I think you. Know, I've seen you on Facebook bum that little little um, that game. That's the one where you can you can pet the dog, can't you? That is a very. L- there is a point where you do pet that pet dog, dog, but it's a fact that um, the the fact that you can save your game impacts a story. Like that is a major plot point, and you've got the fact that um, different monsters have different attacks, and you have to uh, analyze their personality to attack them the most effective way. And that's a case where the story has enhanced gameplay. Yes, it looks like a fun the, game, but I mean, the graphic, graphic-wise, graphic I'm a bit like... Oh, I don't think see, I, I didn't give a shit about the no, graphics. I don't think I could get involved in it. I don't know the game. No. It's like a little... It's like a side-scroller, isn't it? Like, like uh, bits. You see, you see RPG the bits. Diablo. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Like, I, I'd say it's more like kind of in the Final Fantasy mold. You walk around an overworld, then there's a random encounter. Random battles. Yeah, but then the random battles take form of uh, shoot 'em up segments, so it's sort of a mix of two different gameplay. What's styles. your opinion on Skyrim then, and games like that? See, Skyrim does Skyrim does have a case where um, it is a kind of go here and meet this person to do this thing, which I find irritating. But at least there's stuff to do in the middle. I love like I... you are going to a new cave that you've not ever been before to go find. Yeah, a I thing. never did the main quests. I'm yeah. oblivion on Skyrim. So no, I oh, know you just go find yeah. uh, weapons. There's see, nothing like. See, one of the more fun things about Skyrim is that you you can play the main quests and the subquests, or you can just go. You know what? I'm just going to see what the fuck I find. Yeah. And because you've kind of made your own character, that's kind of you crafting your own story and becoming attached to this character that you've made just from the shit that they've uh, made done. Well, um, there was nothing like when I pl- first played Skyrim, there was nothing like when I was first given free reign, getting my horse, riding out and just hearing the... <laughs> 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 
and seeing a dragon shadow pass over me. That yeah. moment, I was like, well, what the fuck? That, know, that is a thing. That's moment. kind of almost the better thing about the narrative of it. Skyrim is that you can just fight a dragon at one point. Yeah. Like, you're not having to yeah, wait. Yeah, they, they were shit. They were too easy to kill, and they came too often. Yeah, but, got, that, yeah, got yeah, but that's a gameplay while. problem. Yeah. In terms I remember, of... I remember discovering the first ever dragon as he was raising another one up, and I was like, this is amazing. Do you know, like, the one who was bringing them all back from the dead? Oh, and yeah, I just, yeah. I just literally just stumbled into him one time, and I was, just, I was like, what the fuck is this motherfucker doing? And he's like, oh, <laughs> How many fucks in that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, it was like bringing this dragon back to life, and I was like, this, I can't believe I just stumbled on this. What can I, can I interact? So I, like, yeah. fired a few arrows, and he, like, ran off. But I was like, that's that well, the detail they've put into that game. Mm. Like, and most gamers, I doubt, will even discover mm. most of what's going on. It's amazing. It's like No Man's Sky. The detail in that game is Yeah, but that's just going to be... I imagine that'll just be a huge world that is not populated. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think with the case of No Man's Sky, it's kind of you got to populate it with stuff. Just, well, it's like procedurally yeah. generated, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But they've said that the sun will burn that's out. In the book a bit. Yeah. yeah, the sun will burn out by the time you as a player discover everything yeah. all the planets. And I think that's boggling. That is baffling. And I hope there's more like... That I, seems a bit bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. I've, 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 whether... Isn't that like a Borderlands? Yeah. Like it would take you 10,000 years to fire all the weapons in Borderlands. Is that what they said? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just making bullshit. <laughs> I but like... I know there was a shitload of weapons in Borderlands and they often spoke about how customizable they were and how many different variations of the weapons. Yeah, it it's looks just like kind of crazy. Wanting... Like when they've zoomed out of the map yeah. you see all the little like little stars and it's just zooming out and zooming out it's like all those stars have a little system and a planet around them. And I've been like, wow. If this, I, yeah. I think it might be know, like, like hyperbe- well, hyperbole. Always... But I, I don't know. I'm hyperbole. Ho- yeah. Hyperbole. But I'm, I'm hoping it's it's something amazing. Something. Well, there's always, well, there's always that uh, map of um, the different Metal Gear Solid games where it just goes, here's Metal Gear Solid 1, here's Metal Gear Solid 2, here's Metal Gear Solid 3. And then here's this massive quilt about the size of Nebraska. That is Metal Gear Solid Five, and you just like, oh, okay, it's a bit one. of a bigger game then. Yes, one but of, yeah, yeah, like it's just ridiculously bigger. What was the story like in that? I've never got into the Mass Effect, uh, the Mass Effect, Metal, Fucking, Metal, 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 Metal Gear Solid stories, because they've always been they are, heavy on the cutscenes. They are. Re- it's weird in that they are remarkably simple and remarkably complex at the same time. <laughs> I've always been like, I've always felt felt like Hideo Kojima wanted to be a director. More yeah. than a game, and he's just yeah, like, right, right, here's, here's yeah. some film shit. Yeah. He always, cons- very he, long. he always calls himself a director. And, and it's a shame, because I've seen the, the, is it Hush? Scene, Silence, whatever her name is. Uh, where she goes mental quiet. like a rapist. Quiet. And that, that scene's amazing. I fucking yeah. love that little scene. Where she's like, right, time to fuck shit up. And she's like throwing knives around, she's like biting her ears off. So cool. Yeah. So she, really? You, you see that scene? Yeah. Did, but, not, did not, you not go? No recollection whatsoever. Really? Jesus! The only scenes, like, cutscene-wise, I can remember in Metal Gear is the ninja in Metal Gear 1. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Metal Gear 2, when Metal Gear Ray, like, escapes out of some boats and does a backflip yeah. off these boats. That was cool. Uh, can't remember shit. Oh, no, I can remember a massive ladder in Metal Gear 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, maybe took like 15 minutes to climb. Yeah. Shit. Metal Gear 4, the only thing I can remember is the, uh, you randomly, you get in a chopper back to Shadow Moses, which is the original yeah. island, and he has like a flashback, dreaming, and you play the original PS1 Metal Gear Solid, ah. but then it's a dream. Ah. Yeah. And that was like, whoa, man. And then Metal Gear 5, most of the story was hidden in audio tapes. Yeah. And you don't like them, do you? And I do not like... I mean, you've got a cassette player, which is cool, because you could find some cool songs, a bit of Pat Benatar, a bit of Poison. Yeah. Um, but well, then most of it was just like, right, so we've told you this little bit. Now, here's Revolver Ocelot yeah. explaining it to you in an 11-minute monologue. Well, that's a, yeah, a divide of gameplay and story. Just, right, here's your gameplay bit, here's your story bit. No, but the story's optional. The story's yeah. optional. Is it? Yeah, because it was in these audio cassettes. You didn't have to oh, listen right, to okay. them. Yeah. I never did. I hadn't, I hadn't got a clue what was going on. <laughs> At the beginning, it like it laid it out a bit, but then the the traditional Metal Gear cutscenes, these long, like, 40-minute yeah, just... bastards, disappear. They, they don't do them. It, there's less. It's after you've progressed past m- Mission X or you've done yeah. this. Like There's various progression points to trigger... A relevant cutscene. Most of it is just these weird cutscenes of you landing in Mother Base. Yeah. And then, yeah, I don't really know what you're doing. 
It became a collectum game. Yeah, mm. I've seen that where you can collect cards. Yeah, and it just never ends. Build ending, up your base. Never shit. ending story because you find at the beginning you're like, oh my god, that guy's a B, that's amazing, and then you find guys that are A's, and then you replace the B's with A's, and then suddenly the game's like S, S plus. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, for fuck's sake, so all the dudes, I've just got to constantly be catching dudes everywhere I go. And it's a bar lake. And I know it's a stealth game, and Metal Gear's always been a stealth game, and I played and completed them all. But I couldn't get it, I couldn't make it to the end of Metal Gear 5. I only <laughs> made it to like the 30th mission, and I just sacked it off. It's one of those games when I was looking at it, I was thinking, that looks like it'd be fantastic when you first, first get into it. First 10 hours of that but game were so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it never did anything new. It was just go, arrive at a base scope it out, realise that that guy's a specialist in neurotechnology and be like, right, I need to recruit him and then go around, you know, shooting electric boxes destroying the alarms and, 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 and it was just the same over and over again. Yeah. I mean, it's just different. They'd argue that they're providing you a sandbox and it's up to you and your imagination to create different imaginative ways. Yeah. But I'm very much just like, what do I need to do? I need to go in there and get that right and just go and do it. Yeah. Just yeah. that kind of, yeah, this in is... In the most brute force, fortish, brute force-ish fashion yeah, I just can like, possibly do. <laughs> give me, give me the goal. Give me the thing. Right here we go. Yeah, yeah. and I, I like yeah. to be a Terminator ultimately. Yeah. Like that's my goal when I play it most games is trying to be Arnold. You yeah. know that bit where he comes out of the lift. Yeah. Oh, they're in the lift, and there's there's Lyndall Hammond and uh, there's Sarah and John Connor. Yeah, and there's the gas, and he goes stay here, and then he walks down. They're all like down on the floor, face down. And he just walks through, just shooting everyone in the back of the legs, putting gas everywhere, just walking through it. That's yeah. what I want to do when I play a game. Just walk through shit. That's until... interesting, because I'm the complete opposite. I like being the guy who sneaks about and takes out his main character and nobody knows who's done it. And we're like, what the fuck? And I like, I I like... up a narrative where the guys are like, he killed him, but none of us saw him. I love all that shit. No, I, be- yeah. I have the thing of like, I thought he was going to hide behind a, a, she- a, a <laughs> box and get his health back. But then he just ran in, stuck him with a grenade and mellied him from behind. <laughs> yeah. See- See, it's always a case of just like kind of, would I want to see it in a movie? Yeah, I can do it in a game. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's why I really liked Far Cry 3's, um, this is going off topic. I really liked Far Cry 3's, um, uh, leveling system where it, um, was just, yep, here's all these different quick time events that you can just unlock and they're really quick and it's just badass where yeah. you just, you jump on a guy, you stab him, you throw your knife and then you throw his knife at someone else and you're just like, yeah, whatever. Takes like five minutes. I didn't play a lot of Far Cry. That's another game with a fairly good story, like yeah. where he's sort of devolving into the monsters that he's fighting. Where he's like, I'm, really, I'm starting to enjoy killing people. Is this normal? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm winning. I love that idea. See, the thing that I like about that one though is that it matches the player because the player likes killing people. Yeah. Because we're like, it's a game and you kill people and it's awesome, it's cool, and you're just like, yay! And to get and so the character. It's like, yes, killing people is awesome. That choice at the end is so stupid, though, where you're doing everything to protect your friends, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, you can, you can kill them if you want. No, no, Citra. I don't want to kill no, my friends. I, I want to kill you, the, No, that, that made... To me, it made sense to kill the friends. Like, if I was writing that story as a film, I would have him kill all his friends at the end. Really? Why? Because that's the story. It's about him becoming this he's, psychotic he's, person. But he's doing it all for his back. friends, Rob. That's yeah, but... Is yeah, but you meet, friends? yeah, but all the way through the game, he's like, whenever he's talking about to his friends, he's just like, hey, I just grabbed a guy and threw a tiger at him, and the tiger ate him and he died, and it was awesome, and all his friends are so like, he's attacking his friends, Rob. He's yeah. protecting his friends. Yeah, but, but all his friends are that. like, eh, fuck. Book. Book. I love that, book. I love that scene. What am I booking? Book. Did you, did you play Book? Did you see Book? What? It's like well, a main yeah, gay character. Yeah, book. book yeah. I, I thought you were meaning book. A gay like, character. I thought you were yeah. talking about book like no, no, as no. in something to look through. No, I, was no, like, I just I like book because it was like... Oh, talking never... over each other here, fellas. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I've never seen a, a gay a gay character in a game represented that way. Where it's just like, just a, a badass. Where it's just like, right, yeah. uh, I've been raping your friend and I'm going to fucking stab you up. I've been like, shit, he's pretty badass. Right. A role model for all gays. And there's a way he's got that knife and he's like, right, son. I think, I'm sure he's Australian. Yeah. Right, sir. So, in summation, nobody cares about graphics, but story and gameplay are important. Yes. Yeah.
That is, that, that is not our replacement jingle. <laughs> right. Gay's Gaming Gulag. Gay's Gaming Gulag.